Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I have a furniture makeover and it is the chairs that you've seen previously during the holiday season back in December. This is the original look of the chairs when I first purchased them. I gave them a coat of paint in chalk paint and then I sealed them really well with a poly acrylic and this is how they look after the paint. Then I'm going in with the actual makeover of the chair and reupholstering the whole chair. And we're gonna do it right here on the video. In case you didn't know, now you do. Let's get started. The thing I like about this compressor is that it is small, compact, it's not too heavy, it's lightweight enough to pick up ground with you if you had to take it to another place. It has this compact handle rolls down and out of the way here's your holes it's new so it's not stretched out this is how you connect this end just simply you push this in this in you hear the air i'm gonna get a good firm grip on it pressure and you hear no air if you hear air that means something is ex air is escaping and so you need to go back in and either tighten all tight all your fittings or add you some teflon tape on the inside and then you have this in and then you have this in the male and the female which connects pull that back the same way you see how that looks and when you pull it back and then you take this end of your gun with a good firm grip and i just thought i'd share this with you all in there you hear no air listen no air if you hear air that means air is escaping somewhere between the fitting you need to go back in tighten some things up add some teflon tape your air pressure is your pressure will keep escaping and it will not build all the way up so you can turn the machine off otherwise it will just keep running flip it on so here we go and i usually start with my fabric French country style chair. Remember the black chairs that I had? And then I'm going to finally do the back and actually cover the actual seat. So you want to cut your fabric, measure twice or three times, cut once. And especially if you have a very unique fabric that you're going to be placing on top of your chair or you measure from front to back, always add extra for overhang, side to side, and do the same so you have overhang along your side and overhang on each side of the chair measure also and have that same overhang on the back you're going to pull your fabric forward you want to cut around these two back these two back legs here you have it taut enough this is sitting and you see it's plenty for the overhang that is going to go in the back and hang down let me just show you and as you can see here it has plenty for the back just take your scissors and cut from the sides here forward well the front of the fabric here back not all the way completely back because you want a little bit to have that extra that'll fall inside without it cutting too far in to cut from the outside don't cut from the middle and we'll just go ahead because you want to be able to tuck it down the sides in the back and it fill in back here so we'll just go ahead and cut that and you see I'm not gonna cut all the way in. And then I'm gonna start, you can call it a V. It's not a V, but you can call it a V. And a little bit of a V, so it's that, here. And you see here, that little V here, or oh, Y. Fold it down inside. And as it goes in, you can see it goes right around to the back comfortably all the way to the edge of your, your chair here you'll be able to wrap it here but once I pull it all the way around you see you have the extra so it is just not meeting it right there and that's why you cut it from the outer edge rather than the middle edge because you want this extra and you want that clean edge to fold down in the front is what I usually do. I give it a staple back here in the back. So the edging of my fabric and the edging of the chair, which you can see right here. I might just tuck my fingernail in there and you can feel the line. And you can go ahead and get you a ghost line that you see right there. You can stapler, press it in. And it doesn't shoot unless it's actually stapled, which I've showed you before on the chair video. 
it doesn't shoot so you don't have to worry about shooting in a wall or anything like that it has to be pressed firmly on a surface in order for it to shoot too and there you have it i'm going to go ahead and give it three shots i want it to stay midway and i don't want it to move you pull it tight enough but not too tight because you don't want this action going on being the indentation here so you want to pull it tight enough but not too tight and you don't want to overstretch your fabric either because once that staple hits in there it could be pulled too tight and it could stretch it and then it'll rip the fabric projects like this as well as using your bigger scissors you're going to need a pair of really small fine scissors so I'll go ahead and hit it again stapler I want to do my corners last. I don't do my corners until I am finished stapling all the way around and then I do this part last because you're going to go in with your fabric and it kind of stretches to the front. There you see, it's laying well. And you're going to do the same, pulling from middle towards the back. I just like the feel because I don't want to have to, I don't want to staple into my wood and damage the wood. So I always just pull and feel my way without going too fast. And you can always cut all of this bulk off, but I'll make sure I get all the way to the back edge before I do that. all done and you can use a razor and that's why I like these tiny scissors because they get in real cutting and you see it's right there along the edge of the chair part where you do the corners so Make sure everything is still tight here. Go ahead and staple all the way around till I get to the corner. And then I'm gonna, you see how that is? The triangle, what you're gonna do is open it. And you can hit that with a staple there. Just fold it in and I fold the other side in. Pull it tight. And I can just go ahead and hit it again. And there you have the corner. empty so I always like to safety in the know here I like to pull my air off before I open the staple gun why because sometimes the pressure of the air and you open it those staples can pop out you see I had to take the chair and lay it down because I'm going to do the back I can't put anything on the inside or on the bottom of it because it will bulge you have a bit of a concave as you can see here once you get it all going three parts normally you can use the um, I forget what you call it it stretches across the back I'll get the proper name and insert it along the bottom of the scroll at the video, 
but I'm going to use, you are going to have several components. I'm going to have my back layer because you're going to see the back of the chair when you are, when it's sitting straight up. Same fabric, the exact same as the seat and what's going on the front. I quit webbing. I'm going to apply this fabric first. That's one layer. Then I'm going to apply my between because I like to have a little cushion. So that's going to sit in between. And I'm going to place that piece on top of there. And I'm going to turn around and take my other cushion piece. And it depends on how plush you want it, um, thickness you want. And then I'm going to add that on top. And I'm going to turn around and take the other fabric, which is the ending fabric, and place it, which is the same as the seat, Here. on the front. When you are removing all of your old fabric and things from your inners, you want to make sure that you remove as many as the staples as you possibly can. Or make sure you get inside the actual inset here when you staple. Not on Hit it with a staple, tight enough. Again, not too tight. And I like to hit all four corners. stapled nice and tight. We have that layer down which you can see is down. Then I will go ahead and add a layer cushion. around the entire chair and I'll clip all of this away and give, show you how that looks. Here you see is the welting that I'm going to add to the chair. After that, I will style them up right here in my home. And a few short hours after that, the chairs were gone to their new home. They are sold. So thank you all for watching me and this quick tutorial here. I hope this helps someone out on today. As always, stay inspired, motivated, and moving, creating something beautiful, if not for yourself, then for someone else. And thank you all for helping me reach the 20K and soon there will be a giveaway. So stay tuned in. This has been Chanel and I'll see you all for the next one.